This is Pastor Marco Sims, and we are studying in the book of Romans, Romans chapter 11. Currently now, we're on Romans chapter 11. And we are also on our prayer line. We have a prayer line, and the number is 641-715-3670, participant code of 688800, we're going to move forward in the Word of God, and we pray that you all will join us on our prayer line as well. We're on there every single day at 6 o'clock p.m. Eastern Time. Romans chapter 11, just a brief summary of it. The Romans chapter 11 uh, gives a, a, a figure of two olive trees. In two olive trees, it talks about Jewish branches and it talks about the olive, uh, the Gentile branches. In being Jewish branches, the Jewish branches are broken off and the, the Gentile branches are grafted in. But God, because God uh, is one that honors his word, he has said, this is my people, my Lord. Even though they are disobedient, I have to cut them off. Graft in the Gentiles, allow them an opportunity to come into the fold. I'll still keep my word uh, for my people. That's because God honors his word. Let's go to God's word. Starting at the first verse. I say then, hath God cast away his people? He has not, God forbid, the word says. For I am also an Israelite, the seed of Abraham of the tribe of Benjamin. This is a Paul speaking at this moment. God hath not cast away his people, which he foreknew from his time of delivering them again and again and again. God is a deliverer who fed them in the wilderness and provided for them, brought them out of Egypt. My God brought them over into the land of plenty. Let's not forget that. But then the word says, want ye not what the scripture said of Elias. This is Elijah speaking. But because at this time, Elijah was hiding out uh, because of Ahab and Jezebel and what was going on and, and the gods that they were serving, the God of Baal that they were serving. Uh, uh, we have Jezebel, who was a Phoenician woman and brought in all these idol gods. And so the people began to worship them at that time. That's what was happening. So Elijah is speaking and he says how he maketh intercession to God against Israel saying, Lord, they have killed thy prophets and dig down thine altars. And I am left alone and they seek my life now. Now they're after me. This is Elijah speaking. Uh, saying, but what said the answer of God unto him? God says, I reserved to myself 7,000 men who have not bowed the knee to the image of Baal. There are some of us today in the earth today that's a remnant of us that trust God enough that we would say, oh, for God I live and for God I'll die. We have to remember that. And the word of God says to us too, over in Matthew the seventh chapter verses 13 and 14, it talks about the gate being straight and it's wide as well. But then it comes back and says that the gate is also a narrow way which leadeth unto life. But there are only going to be a few that are going to find their way. That lets me know in this day, in this hour, just a few folk will find uh, their way into this gate, which is the gate of heaven. My Lord, few will find their way into eternal life based upon their actions and what they've done. Because we begin to rely upon ourselves more than upon the grace of God. So Romans brings us into this, this time to let us know that we should be relying upon Jesus Christ. My God, and God, even though in all of our hard-headedness, our selfishness, and how we betray him, he never leaves us. Never leaves us. The word of God continues on at verse 5, and it says, Even so then at this present time, also there is a remnant according to the election of grace, God's grace. And if by grace then... Is it no more of works? It is not based upon what we do. Not any measurement of what we do. It is by God's grace. He tells us my grace is sufficient for you. What I give you is brand new mercies every single day. Now what he gives you may be different from what he gives me. Because our purpose is different in God. My Lord. Your purpose and my pur purpose may not be the same. So let's, let's be mindful of that. What is God saying to you? What he's saying to you? And if by grace, then 
is it no more of works? Otherwise, grace is no more grace if it's just about works. But no, it's about grace. But if it be of works, then it is no more grace. Otherwise, work is no more work. Oh my God. But the common English Bible says it like this. Let's go to the sixth verse. It says, but it, it is by grace. It isn't by what's done anymore. If it were, God's grace wouldn't be God's grace. Oh, God's grace that he gives us, not based upon what you do, what I've done, what you've given somebody else. It's the love that he has for us, and he just don't go back on his word as well. I wish that you would be in good health and prosper, and your soul prosper, he says to us. My Lord, let's take God at his word. He's not a man that he should lie. He will not do that and he will uphold his word. That's verse 5 and 6 that we've just went through. Now we're in the book of Romans, the 11th chapter, starting at the 7th verse now for anyone that has just joined us. What then Israel hath not obtained that which he seeketh for, but the election has obtained it, and the rest were blinded. Blinded. Uh, 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 those who were chosen found it, but others were resistant. Uh, we're talking about allowing the, the Gentiles an opportunity to embrace uh, grace, come into the understanding and knowledge of Jesus Christ. And the word continues on in verse 8. It says, according as it is written, God has given them the spirit of slumber, eyes that they should not see. And ears that they should not hear until this day. Talking about the Israelites because of their disobedience and hard-headedness. He's speaking about them right now. And David began to say, let their table be made a snare and a trap and a stumbling block and a recompense unto them. That their eyes be darkened that they may not see and bow down their back all way. What are we talking about? A great part of Israel has fallen away. That's what we're talking about. But look at what, because you know why they've fallen away? Because the law was given. We have to understand the purpose of the law. The law was given to identify sin, not to continue embrace the law, my Lord. For grace has come, in, which has brought us into the knowledge of truth. Who Jesus Christ is, what he has done for us, the redeemer of our souls. So we have to embrace that. But the law was identified, given to us to help us to understand what sin was. We didn't know what it was at the time. So the law identified that. So we don't want to stay right there. And we don't want to be under condemnation. Not at all. Not at all. So here is an elected portion of the people that say yes to the will of God. Do we have the same thing today in the world today? We have a few people. I use this word often living in partiality. I believe that we're living beneath our privileges and we don't have to. We have to truly embrace God's word. Isaiah said it like this. And he said, go and tell this people, hear ye indeed, but understand not and see ye indeed, but perceive not. He said the same thing. Isaiah said it, the same thing to uh, the people at that time. So Romans comes back and reiterate that, that the people are blinded. God allows them to be blinded because of their hard headedness. He says, let them, let their table be made a snare. He's saying, because of who they are, the enmity shall react upon and injure themselves. What am I talking about as a, as a people? The most harm that we do is the damage that we do to ourselves. No one else does the most damage to us. We do this to ourselves. What we say, how we speak about people, constantly being backbiters. We say we love and we have the love of God. Do we really have that when somebody's done you wrong, can you truly love them? Can you truly forgive? Seven times 70, God has told us to do that. He didn't say your way or my way. He's saying my way, people. So our ways have to blend in with God's ways. And that's difficult for us because we're not just, we're, we just can't be readers of the word and hearers. We've got to be doers as well. That's what we have to understand. We can't just be hearers, we've got to be doers of God's word. So there is work for us to do. 
Darkness shall come upon them because they love darkness rather than light. Uh, he said, bow thou down their back. This implies to a condition of bondage on the account of their sins. There's a word for account. And I think of us as a people, when we have a bank account, we want to build it up. We don't want to always be in bankruptcy. We don't always want to live from this moment to the next moment when we, when we want, when we have money. Uh, we want to make sure that we have something left over, a petty cash fund, a reserve. So that's how we should be in Jesus. We should have a reserve already there. So when I call upon the name of Jesus, he gives his angels charge over me because I am his child. I am his vessel because I've built up an account in him. How do I build up an account in Jesus when the word of God has already instructed us? He said to us as a people, I need you to watch and pray. Pray without ceasing that you won't faint, that you won't fall by the wayside. He's told us to do that. Oh, the, don't forsake the assembly of yourselves together. The instructions he has given us to live in unity in the love of Jesus Christ. That's what he's given us. So let us hold fast to God's word because God is not a man that he should lie. Let's go to verse 11 now in Romans, the 11th chapter. This is the word of God for the people of God. He says, I say then, have they stumbled that they should fall? God forbid, but rather through their full salvation is coming to the Gentiles for to provoke them to jealousy. So what has done, what happened here? God gives an open door for the Gentiles to come in. In doing that, uh, this is how we are as a people. I have to give an application to that. To once have had something and to have lost it, and then to see your brother have it, do we rejoice with them or are we jealous of them? Mm. But you once had it now. You once had everything this person has right now. But they've made the right choices and say, I'm going to live for Jesus. And the abundance falls upon them now. That's what I believe God does. The reigning of God's blessings shall consume us. As I say every single day, Hey, on the prayer line, you have to believe this by faith because I'm not just saying this. I'm trusting God for this. God's got a miracle with your name on it, church. You've got to embrace that and walk by faith in that. So what has happened? God gives an open door for the Gentiles to come in and it provokes the jealousy of the Israelites. For God has said, I've given you a place. I just want you to come back into the place that I've already given you. So every now and then we ha he has to close the door on them. And then he reopens it because that's the love of Jesus. What happens to us as a, as a child of God? What happens to us when we chastise our children? It is that we're chastising them out of love. To provoke them to do what's right. That's what happens. We're only provoking them out of love that they would embrace the truth and begin to walk in that knowledge. That's all Jesus was doing. God was doing at that time. The word of God goes on. Now, if the fall of them be the riches of the world and the diminishing of them, the, gen the riches of the Gentile, how much more their fullness, how much more uh, the Gentiles will call and come in by great multitude and be built up because the fall of the Israelites, of the Jews, that had already been the selected and chosen people. But what the purpose of this was, see, God is, 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 is um, miraculous in his thoughts and how he does things. It was all about the winning of souls. My God, the Israelites had already had the promise, but the door is now open for us to embrace it and come in. For I speak to you Gentiles in as much as I am an apostle of the Gentiles, I magnify mine office. This is what Paul was saying, because I come to be a representative of Jesus Christ, but to win the souls of the Gentiles. If by any means I may provoke to the emulation them which are my flesh them that are which of my heritage and might save some of them. For if the casting away of them be the reconciling of the world, what shall the receiving of them be but life from death? My God, so we can have life through death. What those that were once dead can now walk into life. But some folk choose to stay here. 
I say to us as a people of God, there are choices that we have in life. Let's begin to understand that. What's the choice that you've made about Jesus? Mm. How will you serve him, my Lord? Will you say yes to the will of God? Are you truly surrendering your will to the will of God? So it comes now to this moment that you've got to show up and you've got to act out on what you say. For God is going to put you to the test. Those of us that say yes to the will of God. What is that test for you and what is that test for me? When we go through something. For there's a storm that shall come in your life, such as a storm in my life. Will you be able to persevere? Will you be able to say, Jesus, I can ride this storm all the way out and all the way through because I know you got me. Yay, that's the faith that we have because all the time we want to smell the roses and we want the best of everything. But there is something that goes along with this walk. My God, I shall be persecuted all the day long for his sake. But God comes back and tell me, I got you, Marco. I got you, Sarita. Uh, 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 Sharita, I got you, April. I got you, Sharice, my God. God said, I got your back, my Lord, because we trust in him. It doesn't matter about the circumstances and the situations. What it is is that I've learned to embrace the word of God and thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. So what God was doing was provoking his own people to jealousy so that he could win win them over. That's what he was doing. He is saying, I want to win you over. I'm not going to leave you, but there's a time when I've got to put you to the test. How much do you love me? Because I've already proved that I loved you. I proved it when I gave you the greatest gift in the world. And the greatest gift is Jesus Christ. My God, what more do we want to ask for him? Do we want Jesus to die again? My Lord, out of how we act, what we say, what we do, even sometimes how we dress, my Lord, don't want to talk about that much because see the church don't want to hear that much on how we represent ourselves and how we're representing Christ. There's a posture that we have in Jesus. My Lord, there's a walk that we have. There's a way that we talk in Jesus that the world can see the light of God down on the inside of us. We come to make a difference uh, in, 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 in the life, my God, the life of someone else. We come to make a difference. We make a bold impression upon the world because the world has impressed themselves upon the church. They're walking in the church any kind of way, doing any kind of thing, sitting up under the power of God, hearing the word of God, my Lord Jesus. So he's preaching this same word to the Israelites. I've given you, I provided for you. I've been your shelter, my God. I've given you manna from heaven, my Lord. Lord Jesus, what more can I do? Oh, this is God's word for God's people. Yes, yes. The verse 16 now in Romans, the 11th chapter. This is God's word for God's people. For if the first fruit be holy, the lump is also holy. And if the root be holy, so are the branches. I'm going to read this out of the common English Bible. But if if part of the branch of the dough is offered to God as holy, the whole batch of the dough is holy too. If a root is holy, the branches will be holy too. If some of the branches were broken off and you were a wild olive branch and you were grafted in among the other branches and share the root that produces the rich oil of the olive tree. What is happening here? What happens here? Two trees here. Two olive trees are present here. The branches fall off and we have here the we have first of all the Israelites and then we have another olive tree in which the branches are the Gentiles that have fallen out. But somehow the the branches of the the olive tree from the Gentiles find its way into the roots of the the tree of the Israelites of that tree because they know that in that that oil is rich, my Lord. And when they're grafted in, a conversion takes place. My Lord, they're changed for the betterment because they become a part of the root. God's word continuing at verse 18. Then uh, don't brag like you're, you're better than the other branches. See, the, the Israelites would brag, brag, I got something that you don't have. If you do brag, be careful. It's not you that sustains the root, 
but it's the root that sustains you, my Lord. It is God's power that keeps us. The old church would say, and I say this so often, but I want us to be mindful of where we're at today because the our ancestors of the old have died off, have gone on and are resting in peace. God bless their soul. So we now are the church now. We are the church that must deliver a sound word to the people of God today, to the millennials today that God yet saves. My Lord, my Lord, my God is a redeemer. Yes, yes, yes. My God satisfies the soul. My God is a healer. That's the word that we have to tell this branch that has broken off now that it can be brought in and, and, and combined with and grabbed Crafted in into the root of the olive tree of life, which is Jesus Christ. That's where we have to be at. If you do not brag, be careful. It's not you that sustains the root, but it's the root that sustains you. God keeps us. This is the wonderful thing about Jesus, my Lord. He's so wonderful, he says. Uh, even though I'm going to prepare a place for you, I'm going to prepare a place for you that where I am, that ye may be also, that you can eventually come there. But in my absence, I'm going to give you a gift like no other. I'm going to give you the gift of the Holy Ghost that can keep you when you can't keep yourself, that can bring my word back to your remembrance, that can save your soul. God is so wonderful. He's so wonderful. He's always thinking about us. Fine, they were broken off because they were, weren't faithful. But you stand only by your your faithfulness. So don't think in a proud way. Instead, be afraid. If God didn't spare the natural branches, he won't spare you either. So look at God's kindness and harshness. It's harshness toward those who fell off. But it's God's kindness for you, provided you continue in his kindness. Otherwise, you could be cut off. You know, what happens for us and what happens in life is that we as a people, we take kindness for stupidity or we take somebody's kindness for a weakness or we uh, take advantage of them. That's what happens so often. And because God is such a loving God, we say, well, God, I can come back. You know, just think about this living a life of infidelity. Uh, I'm going to put it out there like that. Or an adulterous individual who says, I'm not going to do this again. I, just God save me one more time. Uh, uh, but then, you know, you go back and you do it again and then you do it again. What good is it to say something and to have this word down on the inside of you and still be void? We can do all these things in the physical and there's still an absence in my soul. Mm. I want you to think about that. We can do all the things we choose to do and still be lonely. Because we haven't truly embraced God and his power. And that's what he's saying. Just a remnant. Just a remnant of my people. If you be faithful, willing, and obedient, ye can eat the good of the land. And the word goes, 23rd verse, and even those who were cut off will be grafted back in if they don't continue to be unfaithful because God is able to graft them in again. This is so wonderful about God. Even when he gives us over into a reprobate state, even when we uh, uh, draw away from him, him. He doesn't draw away from us. That's the wonderful thing about him. He's a forgiving God. We can come back to him and we have to be honest. That's our problem today. If you're suffering from something, if you're going through a specific trial, you got to be honest about it because God already knows. Whatever that situation is that ails you, you've got to be truthful about it. you got to come to God. I'm dealing with this infidelity. There, there's something going on within me, God. You made me that I would be with somebody. Give me somebody special. Give me that individual that I should have. Speak to God because he's the best friend that you can have. My Lord, and he will, he's a supplier of our need, is what he said. He'll give us what we need. He's a God who gives us a chance again and again and again. He's waiting for you like he was waiting for me, my Lord. And I'm not all of that either, because there's some things that I've got before the Lord as well. We've got to be honest about it. And I just, I'm trusting God, but my face is toward heaven. You got to keep your face then. You've got to be honest about it. Go on God's word. If you were naturally a part of the, the wild olive tree and you were cut off from it, and then contrary to nature, you were grafted into the cultivated olive tree, won't 
these natural branches stand even be an even better chance of being grafted back into their own olive tree. God allows us to come back to him. So come just as you are, church. Those of us that are, are weary, my Lord, those of us that are broken, we're broken from relationships, we're broken from being in certain churches and things didn't go the way that we knew that they should have, but we should have just embraced the word of God. And see, that's where we fall there because we put our faith and trust in man and not in God. You got to put your faith and trust in God and you got to know why you are worshiping at the place that you are working, worshiping at because you, you, you are on assignment. There's a purpose for you to be where you're at. And you've got to be able to ask God that. You've got to be able to do that. Let's go on to God's word. I'm coming to a close. For I would not, brethren, that ye should be ignorant of this mystery. God doesn't want us to be ignorant of anything, not even of Satan's devices. Lest ye should be wise in your own conceits that blindness in part is happened to Israel until the fullness of the Gentiles be come in. The, the Israelites were blinded, which allowed an opportunity for the Gentiles to come in. Oh, we began in the book of Romans and we began that, I believe Phoebe penned this, uh, brought this letter to the Romans, but what Paul was ministering to them is that I want you to embrace the gospel. I want you to have knowledge of grace. I want you to be, have the same knowledge of the God that I have. And that's the same perspective that we should have as a people for other individuals wherever we go. We should be witnessing vessels. There, there doesn't need to be a witnessing team that's always going out. We as the church, a community, temples of God should be witnessing vessels, witnessing it every opportunity that we get in the grocery store, at the gas station, on your job, in the classroom, to the teachers, to other peers that you have. Your life should line up with the word of God. That's what God is saying for us. That's what has to happen for us. Much work for us to do, people of God. And the word goes, and so all Israel shall be saved as it is written. So even though I've allowed and I've closed the door on them, God, I would say, because I am a God who keeps my promises, my God, I'm not an Indian giver. I just don't take away what I've said. My word shall remain. That's what he's saying. My word shall remain. Uh, there shall come out of Zion the deliverer and shall turn away ungodliness from Jacob. For this is my covenant unto them when I take away their sins. God will take away the sins of the world, my Lord. Oh, so we've got to preach preachers, Jesus. Yes, like never before. We've got to preach Jesus to this dying world that don't accept him and saying, whatever I choose to do, I'm just going to do it because this is how I feel. This is how I was born. This is what I believe. It just doesn't matter. Oh, I believe in God, but I won't worship him the way you worship him. I won't believe the way you believe. Uh, but it isn't about you believing what I believe. It's just believing God's word. Because then he says to me, there's no mystery in my word. There's no respect of persons that I would have. I'm offering the same thing to every individual that will embrace it. That's what he's saying to him. Oh, he said, I would not have you ignorant of this mystery. Any secret thing uh, uh, was just known for a few. But he's saying there's an open door for those that want to receive me. I am present right now. I call you in right now in the name of Jesus. Those individuals that are lost, souls lost, you're weary and don't know what to do. Last verses here. My God. And the Redeemer shall come to Zion, unto t and unto them uh, they turn from transgression into Jacob, said the Lord. As for me, this is my covenant with them, said the Lord, my spirit that is upon thee, and my words which I have put in thy mouth shall not depart out of thy mouth, nor out of the mouth of thy seed, nor out of the mouth of the, the seed, seed, said the Lord, from henceforth and forever. Verse 28, as according as concerning the gospel, they are enemies for your sakes, but 
as touching the election, they are beloved for the Father's sake. Let's go to the Common English Bible for this. According to the gospel, they are enemies for your sake. But according to God's choice, they are loved for the sake of their ancestors. Our ancestors, you know, sometimes there are, there are certain things we hear in the church. We've heard this before. Uh, God is keeping you because of the prayers of your grandmother, your grandfather. He's saying for the, the sake of the ancestors, I'm going to still save you. For the gifts and the calling of God are without repentance. For as ye in times past have not believed God, ye have not obtained mercy through their unbelief. Even so have these also now not believed, that through your mercy they also may obtain mercy. For God has concluded them all in unbelief, that they might have mercy upon him. He gives us mercy. What's so wonderful about God? The Word says uh, uh, he's a God uh, 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 that uh, spares us. He's not an Indian giver either. The gift that God gives us, he doesn't take back from us. See, a lot of times people feel this is what happens in the church as well and 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 just please hear me when I say this people of God this happens in the church so often uh, men and women of God uh, uh, when the enemy comes in and, and attacks individuals we feel that uh, I can still deliver uh, God's word because I'm gifted God doesn't take that gift from us but we are not operating in the fullness of God and we have to be very careful those of us that are leaders that we're leading by example because that spirit that's within us can be transferred down to the church my God, it can disseminate down. So let's be very careful in what we say and what we do. My God, going into the last verses now. 33, oh, the depths, oh, the depths of the riches, both of the wisdom and knowledge of God. How unsearchable are his judgments and his ways past finding out. God doesn't think the way we think. He does not. Even when we Hold and harbor a thought against someone else. My God, he's a God of peace. And there are times that he does make war as well and allow war to come. Um, things do happen. But he just, just doesn't think the way we think. We uh, uh, keep ourselves in bondage uh, from not allowing the word to be a part of our lifestyles. And what we say, uh, we, we, we don't want to miss the mark in Jesus. Uh, so we want to make sure that we are truly embracing God's word. Going on. Uh, oh, the depth and the riches of, uh, of the wisdom and knowledge of God. How unsearchable are his judgments and his ways past finding out. For who has known the mind of God or who has been his counselor or who has first given to him and it shall be recompensed unto him again for of him and through him and to him are all things to whom be glory and honor. God keeps us if we want to be kept. Who has known? We don't know the mind of God. Uh, who has been his, his mentor? Who, who has given him a gift? And, and who has been paid back by him? All things are from him. Everything we have is from Jesus. Oh God, we live, we move, we have our being in him. Let's be mindful of that. And so what God did for his children is that he cut them off for a time. Yes, but because he says, I'm going to bless this people, they're my chosen people, he opens the door back up for them again. And so what happens for the people, the door is open for you and I as God's people. Yes, he has called us in. All we have to do is to continue to embrace him. Walk up in the ways of, of the Lord our God. Examples have been given before us. There are several people that have not read the word of God. And they're living out at, uh, through examples of other leaders. So we have to be very careful on how we're living, how our lives are directed, and the great impact that we have upon others. We're so grateful for God allowing the Israelites coming back into the fold. We're grateful to God for his mercy and his love is what he's saying to the people. And most of all, we're grateful for God for opening up the door to the Gentiles, his people. That's what Paul was preaching to in this time. 
Oh, the depths of the richness that we have in Jesus. Let's continue to embrace him as we continue to lean on Jesus, trust him, comprehend his word, and remember, people of God, we must, we must continue to pray to remain connected with him. Let's close out in prayer. God, we thank you for this word today. We pray, God, that uh, we are covered by your blood and that we are strengthened through your word, God. Yes, yes. We're so grateful for you dying for us, grateful for this word, knowing that you have an open door for us. Yes, God, in your word, you say, says you'll never leave us or forsake us in times of trouble and times when we're in despair and we just don't know what to do. We're grateful for having you in our lives. Keep us, God, when we can't keep ourselves. We're so grateful, God. Honor this prayer, Lord, and continue to help us to read the word, comprehend it, and live by the word of God. God bless you all, people. Remember that we're here every week on Thursdays teaching God's word. We'll be teaching next week on Romans chapter 12. And we also have a prayer line. Join us on the prayer line every single day. We've been praying for three years. We're not going to stop. Because the word has says to pray without ceasing. We're building our church on the very foundation of prayer. We're praying until something happens. The prayer line number is 641-715-3670-688800-641-715-3670. Participant code of 688800 at 8, I'm sorry, at 6 p.m every single day. Now, some folk I see on here now haven't seen you on the prayer line. Come on back and join us. My Lord, we love to have you. And new individuals, join us. If you have a specific prayer request, reach out to us on Facebook. Send us a message. My God, we will honor that. We will definitely add the name to the prayer list. Or you can go to our church website, sanctuarycc.com. Lastly, you have an opportunity to call our number, church number 770-898-9800 with your prayer request. I want you to know as I close.